Dingai Fusion Records. Chapter 98 Two Sabres They already know. Once Feng Qianzhen was freed, he ran out of the palace, asking, Where's my magical artifact? There's no time to get it. Xiang Shu walked out of the palace and looked up at the sky. Wang Zi had lost his body and was now shuttling about in the sky, a blazing trail of black flames behind him. Chen Xing stumbled out, only to see hundreds of thousands of drought fiends outside the palace, just like the scene he had once seen. Who exactly are you? Wang Zi's voice thundered under the sky. Exorcist? Were you the one that restored all magic? And where is the Dingai Pearl? Chen Xing looked up at the sky, but didn't answer. Wang Zi started laughing weirdly. That's all right very soon we will know come, let me see how strong you are. I'm tired of hearing that laughter of yours, Chen Xing cut in coldly, then threw the yin yang mirror to Xiang Shu. Take care of that. Xiang Shu put the yin yang mirror away and said in a deep voice, We go out now. No Chen Xing retracted both his hands. Follow me. Then, he pushed his hands out, releasing a bright flash of light. Wang Zi, who was still in the sky, cried out in agony, the resentment around him dispersed by the light. Heart lamp. Wang Zi roared. Chen Xin took the chance to rush out of the palace. Xiang Shu shouted, Where to? Finding your weapon. Drought fiends filled their sight. Chen Xin raised his hand, an array of light shot out, making the drought fiend herd scatter everywhere in terror and clearing out a path. The three of them dashed through until they arrived at the ruins of the former exorcist department of the Great Han Dynasty. Resentment was swirling around it, and the floor was filled with black runes. The former exorcist department of the Great Han Dynasty had been razed to the ground long ago. Chen Xing slowed down as he took in the sight before him. Xiang Shu looked back at the sky. In the time it had taken for them to get here, a drought fiend king covered in black armor had led a drought fiend army to surround the valley in a watertight encirclement. Resentment billowed and flowed to the ground, revealing Shi Has figure formed with dancing black flames. Were you looking for this? Shi Has hoarse voice asked slowly. He raised his hand, and the black flames from his palm parted to reveal a barbed pike with sharp ends. Blood red devil god runes appeared on the pike one by one. Shi Hai raised his hand, and the spear instantly transformed into five demonic weapons hook, halberd, thorn, chukram, and a whip. They danced around one another in the sky, then suddenly shot towards the three of them. Before Chen Xin could think through it, he had already lit up a heart lamp barrier, its bright light receding. After the black spear smashed into it, a bloody ray of light broke out and pierced through the magic of the heart lamp, shooting straight at Chen Xing's chest. Watch out! Xiang Shu suddenly pushed the yin yang mirror forward to block it. Late at night in Chang'an City, the little dog was wagging its tail with the yin yang mirror in its mouth, watching this scene from a distance at the Songbei I residence back door. Half of the Songbei I residence had been destroyed, and the whole of Chang'an woke up overnight. The dog hesitated a little. It looked left and right, not knowing if it should return to the palace or Songbei I residence. At that moment, the figures of a young man and a middle-aged man walked up behind the little dog. That dog suddenly felt a little scared. It wagged its tail, taking a few steps back. Yin Yang Mirror The young man picked up the Yin Yang Mirror, but soon after, a few cracks appeared on the mirror. The middle-aged man felt his soul leave his body. He shouted, Throw it! Throw it far away! Young man! When the yin yang mirror was struck by the spear, it shattered into pieces with a bang. The world collapsed in an instant. You guys got off easy this time, Shi Hai said in a cold voice. Feng Qianzhen yelled, No way. It broke just like that. Then, the scenery started breaking up. Chen Xing shouted, Akala blade. Before he could finish, he was spat out of the yang side of the yin yang mirror again. In the short span of an hour, Chen Xing and Xiang Shu had moved from the present world to the mirror world, then back from the mirror world to the present world. 
Their heads were spinning from all the switching. Xiang Shu had bumped into something again too, but he shielded Chen Xing once more as they bounced around. They smashed straight into the second floor of Baishi, shattering the room divider. The common people near Song Bai residents, who had been watching the commotion, heard the loud noise and explosion. They turned around once again and ran towards the source of the uproar. Right at the next moment, a mass of resentment shot up into the sky. The yin-yang mirror broke, this time, the explosion radius was far greater than the one in Yuke. Within an instant, two houses had been razed to the ground. Fortunately, the people nearby had heard the unusual sounds coming from Song Bai residents and had all gotten up to see what was going on. Otherwise, the explosion would have killed a lot of people. Black flames were flying around, bringing out hundreds of thousands of drought fiends. Drought fiends rained down from the sky, and they smashed into the ground one after another, filling up Zuck Street. It was dawn, and the first glimmer of light could be seen. The common people instantly cried out in alarm as they all fled in a hurry. Chen Xing. Xiang Shu shouted. Xing Er. Chen Xing's head was spinning from all the bashing about, but when he heard the word Xing Er, he sobered up straight away. Ah! You still remember, remember my nickname. Xiang Shu was stunned as well, but he continued, there's no time. Come over here. He grabbed Chen Xing's hand and brought him to the front of the building. Chen Xing. All of the drought fiends in Chang'an had been released from the Yin Yang mirror. Chen Xing, the Yin Yang mirror broke. Everything not originally from the mirror would have been released, crap, what do we do? The drought fiend herd started running amok and hunting the people of Chang'an. There were drought fiends everywhere. Black flames surrounded Wang Zi as he flew towards the royal palace, a terrifying sneer appearing on his face. This is heaven's will Wang Zi said slowly. Well then, I guess it'll happen today then. Chang'an descended into chaos. At dawn, countless people were already beginning to escape for their lives. Xiang Shu rushed down the building. Chen Xing said, return to the palace. Xiang Shu, we can't. There's too many. We have to get out of here. Every time Chen Xing released a powerful burst of bright light, it would successfully disperse a large group of drought fiends. However, the heart lamp couldn't completely destroy this herd of living corpses. At most it could drive them away, but they would gather again not long after. Moreover, Chen Xing was gasping a little, it seemed that even with the spiritual qi restored to the world, he would still feel tired, so he had to curb himself a little. Xiang Shu picked up a sword that the patrolling guards had dropped. Mana. Chen Xing lit up the heart lamp a little, then soon after, the sword Xiang Shu was holding started glowing. Like a tiger charging into a flock of sheep, he slashed his way through. All of a sudden, he stopped, he sensed danger. Looking up, he saw several dark shadows headed towards Chen Xing to attack him. Look out! Xiang Shu immediately retreated. But right then, another figure jumped down from above, brandishing two steel claws. Electricity surged through the claws as they swung through the air. Lightning burst with a loud bang, forming a chain of light that struck the drought fiend that was charging towards Chen Xing. Its momentum didn't stop however, and instead spread along the long street. Xiao Shan? Xiao Shan? Xiao Shan? Chen Xing yelled. Chen Xing. Xiao Shan shouted back and lunged at Chen Xing, then hung tightly onto him. After grabbing Chen Xing, he shouted at Xiang Shu, Gag. Xiang Shu. Xiao Shan. Chen Xing was shaking from the excitement as he yelled. He and Xiao Shan were practically bawling into each other's arms. A moment later, they parted. Chen Xing saw Xiang Shu staring at them from the side with a weird expression on his face, so he quickly whispered to Xiao Shan, Don't say anything first, why did you come? Xiao Shan, I was taking a bath in Barkle Lake. Suddenly, a chain of explosions could be heard again. 
Blazing flames merged into a fire dragon that roared as it rushed through the long street heading east, and a violent gust of wind whooshed into the sky. Little Shidi. I'm here. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. They heard someone laughing as the air around them stirred, making their loose robes, sleeves, and belt flutter. That person appeared like an elegant sage as he recited wind spells that manipulated the air around him. His sleeves fluttered as he rode over on the wind. Xie Shikshun. Chen Xing was taken aback. When did Xie In learn this many magic arts? Xie In stood high up on a wooden archway in the north of Chang'an city. With a casual wave of his hand, he sent out several five earth talisman that transformed into heavy rocks that rolled over the drought fiend herd in the street. With both his hands forming seals, he spoke loudly. Magic has been restored, and Shikshan wrote a poem specially for this. Xiao Shan and Chen Xing roared at the same time, just fight. Stop reciting poetry. Chen Xing felt like he was going mad. Okay. Since magic has been restored, Shikshan will honor his promise. I've come to aid you in exterminating demons. Xie An's sleeves were puffed up with wind as he flew around in the sky, shooting fire bombs that were exploding everywhere. Xiang Shu. Chen Xing held his forehead with one hand. Xiang Shu glanced at Xie An, then at Xiao Shan, confusion evident in his gaze. Deep in the palace, military orders were being delivered like a flowing stream. The strange incidents in Chang'an were originally thought to have been a rebellion plotted by someone, but the situation started becoming more and more complicated as the reports rolled in. Tuibuyan had already led troops out to suppress that herd of monsters, and Fu Zhen was awoken in the middle of the night, looking dazed as he stood in the palace. He was still in disbelief at the sudden turn of events. Princess King he ran over quickly and said in a trembling voice, Your Majesty, you have to leave this place. Leave the palace with me to take refuge. Fu Jian roared in anger, what on earth is happening? Which family dared to rebel? Several shadows appeared from the ground. Princess King He's eyes widened. She turned around to stand in front of Fu Jian, dagger in hand as she stared blankly at the scene in front of her. Black flames Shi Hai walked over slowly, saying in a deep voice, Your Majesty, if this hadn't happened, our plan was to do this a few years later. Now that magic is restored, please forgive me for not waiting that long. Otherwise, after the exorcists of the world recover their mana, I'm afraid the undue delay may bring trouble. Wang Zi Fu Jian's eyes widened, staring at the black flames in front of him in disbelief. The shadows all around them transformed into a drought fiend army and gathered around. Yet Fu Jian was extremely calm, worthy of his monarch title. He only asked in astonishment, What kind of Yeogwai are you? Shi Hai continued, I should probably change to another body to talk to your majesty. You should be more accustomed to that one. Then, the black flames encircled one of the servants who cried out in anguish as Shi Hai possessed his body. His face started melting as it transformed to reveal Wang Zi's appearance once again. Wang Zi said casually, Later, I'd like to make a deal with your majesty. I still have to set up a defensive array right now so I'll be busy for a while. With that, the demonic spear appeared in Wang Zi's hand. Black light burst forth that spread towards the entire royal palace. In the fallen Song Bei residence, Feng Qianyi's hair was disheveled and his family's Huan Shao saber that had been recast into two was placed in front of his knees. He shook his wheelchair and slowly moved up Mount Song through the mountain road behind Song Bei residence. The city was ablaze with flames. The Imperial Guards had been startled awake long ago and were now trying to use fire to herd the drought fiends before getting rid of them all at once. Resentment was rising from the royal palace, revealing a black barrier around it. When he saw this scene, Feng Qunyi let out a wild laugh. You finally got your just desserts, Feng Qunyi murmured. Feng Qianzhen was dressed in a set of martial robes as he walked through the mountain road and up the mountains. He stared at his older brother, looking as if he couldn't bear to watch. Feng Qianyi slowly said, 
Do you want to kill me? It's useless, it's useless no matter what you do. Lord Shihai has already activated his setup. The Lord will soon be reborn. By then, all of the Hu in the Divine Land will pay for their debt in blood. Feng Qianzhen raised his hand. The spiritual Qi of the world began gathering between the two of them, and the two Huan Shao sabers flew towards Feng Qianzhen. Feng Qianyi was sitting on his wheelchair, but he suddenly turned around, his eyes filled with hatred and anger. He raised his hand as well and resentment billowed out it entangled one of the Huan Shao sabers, and it flew towards Feng Qianyi. Sen Luo Wangxiang separated in the air with the two brothers wielding one each. Feng Qianzhen said, I failed to stop you once, and in the many nights after your death, I was always thinking that if we could return to the moment where it all began, I... Dage. Feng Qianyi was holding the saber. Resentment shot out from the saber and shrouded his entire body within the black qi flames. Cut your nonsense, Feng Qianyi replied in a low voice. Since you've decided to be an exorcist, then fight. Must we do it this way? Feng Qianzhen crouched and pressed down on his saber. Feng Qianyi sat on his wheelchair, staring at Feng Qianzhen from afar. Both of them attacked at the same time. A loud bang rang out in an instant. The qi surrounding Feng Qianyi and Feng Qianzhen exploded, Feng Qianyi was releasing black qi while Feng Qianzhen used the Sen Luo saber to stir up the spiritual qi of the world. The two major forces of life and death collided at the peak of Mount Song. Within a ten-mile radius of their clash, green leaves were violently stirred up, and vines lifted from the ground to attack Feng Qianyi. However, with one swing of Feng Qianyi's saber, the tornado of leaves that had been filled with life turned black, withered, and fell. Verdant lushness and withering decay instantly formed a clear demarcation line. Half of Mount Song was withered, while the other half flourished, the yin side was like a black mountain with barely any sign of life, while the yang side was engulfed in the lush greens of midsummer. The two sides pitted against each other on equal ground. Great Chan Yu At dawn, Tuibian led his troops across the city and met up with Xiang Shu outside Zuck Gate. Chen Xing, Xian, and Xiao Shan were all on horses as they witnessed everything. There were quite a lot of Hu of different tribes from Chang'an City gathered around Xiang Shu. Right after this unforeseen event had occurred, Xiang Shu had already begun to rescue people. When he passed through the streets, all of the Hu would start gathering towards him. The royal palace has been taken. Tuibian reported. There's some black vapor outside it, we can't get in. His Majesty and Princess King He are still inside. Xiang Shu said in a low voice, are the officials safe? Tuibian nodded. The Murong family's cavalry are trying to find a way to get into the palace. Xiang Shu asked again, what about the people of Chang'an? Tuibian, they've all been evacuated. Fu Jian was being held in the palace, so at the moment there was no one to give orders. Fortunately, Xiang Shu happened to be in Chang'an right now, so everyone could only come forward to consult the leader in name of all the Hu. It was also lucky Wang Zi's first target after releasing the drought fiends had been the palace, and that he had mobilized a sizable army of drought fiends to surround it, so he couldn't care about harming the civilians. Xiang Shu laid down an order. Tell all of the officials and soldiers in the city to retreat to Afang Palace. Tuibian, what about His Majesty? Xiang Shu replied, Hu Wang will be in charge of rescuing him. Chen Xing, that madman is your Shixing. Chen Xing, yet. Yeah. I guess so. I'd better go look for Feng Dage first. Chen Xing had a strong hunch that Feng Qianzhen was most likely settling things with Feng Qianyi right now. Xian was floating about, being carried by the air currents before he flew down from a high archway. He said to Xiang Shu, Martial God. I've come to lend you guys a hand. Chen Xing immediately shot him a look. Xian was a little puzzled and asked, Little Shidi, what's the matter? Xiang Shu had always felt like something was a little strange. When this adult child pair showed up, he felt like he used to know them for some reason but Chen Xing said to him, it's fine. Evacuate the civilians first, 
I'll go look for Feng Dage with Xie Shixheng. So. Xiang Shu didn't say anything else and led his troops to the city. Ayo, my old back. Just now, Xian didn't take note of his posture when he landed and sprained himself a little. As he followed behind Chen Xing, he wanted them to ball into each other's arms a few times, yet Chen Xing and Xiao Shan were all running at top speed, so he could only shout, Slow down ah! Shi Di! Chen Xing led Xian and Xiao Shan to find a horse, mount up, then spurred the horse to rush to Song Bei I residence as fast as possible. He asked, How did you two? Xiao Shan said, I remember everything. I remember. Chen Xing asked, How's L Yu Ying? Xiao Shan, I've told him everything, everything. He let me come here immediately. Don't worry about him. There's Mana now. He can cultivate with the spiritual qi. So, he can hold on for now. Xian said, when it happened, I was taking a bath when my mind suddenly cleared up. After thinking about it over and over again, it didn't seem like a dream, so I couldn't even care about asking His Majesty for forgiveness before rushing over to Chang'an. Fortunately, I bumped into little brother Xiao Shan here when I entered the city. Xiao Shan asked in bewilderment, I was taking a bath too? Why is that? Chen Xing, it has nothing to do with taking a bath, it just so happens everyone was taking a bath, never mind, I'll explain to you guys later. We have to get Feng Dage back first. Chen Xing dismounted. Half of Song Bei residence had already collapsed, and when he entered the garden, the phoenix was perched on a Wu Tong tree branch, asking, Do you need help? All three of them yelled at the same time. Xiao Shan, a bird. A phoenix. Chen Xing replied, We don't need your help for now, but we might need it soon, just follow us first B.A. Xian studied the phoenix, but Chong Ming said, Looks like you've encountered something even more troublesome. Xian asked Chen Xing, What trouble? Chen Xing took a deep breath and stopped. Akala blade has fallen into Shi Ha's hands. That was quite serious, and only Xiang Shu hasn't realized the gravity of this. Now that Akala blade had been refined into a demonic weapon, could they still get rid of Chu? Xian turned to Chong Ming I've been very disrespectful indeed. So you are the Yao King mentioned in our historical records? When I was young, I once searched for the traces of the dragon and phoenix everywhere, yet they're actually here. Xiamao had some doubts before this that have finally been cleared up with seeing you here. Let's go. Chen Xing cried out bitterly. He ran back to tug at Xian's sleeves, saying anxiously, What kind of time is this? Yet, you're still trying to talk about having a friend come from afar. Can we fly up? No, Xian said. Wind spells can only be maintained for a very short time. If the magic disappears, it's easy to sprain your feet when you fall, so to be safe, we should still hike up. Chen Xing. Feng Qianzhen. Xiao Shan shouted. Feng Qianzhen and Feng Qianyi were both going all out. Feng Qianyi had just learned how to use the Sen Luo saber, but he was in his home ground, Chang'an, abundant with resentment. Resentment started swirling along the ground from all sides of Chang'an and surrounded Mount Song like ocean waves then continued moving up the mountainside and into Feng Qianyi's body. Meanwhile, Feng Qianzhen was gathering a constant stream of spiritual qi from the heavens. Spiritual qi poured down from the sky like a waterfall at the right time. Mount Song was like a lone isle in the pitch-dark sea. Both sides were tied, and for the moment, no one had the upper hand. How has even Feng Qianyi learned how to use the Sen Luo saber? Chen Xing cried out in disbelief, then he suddenly realized, Wang Zi must have obtained the manual for Sen Luo Wang Ziyang from the Yin Yang mirror and passed it to Feng Qianyi. The closer they approached the mountain, the stronger those mutually exclusive life and death forces got. They stirred up a violent storm that swept away all of the stones and broken branches on Mount Song, then dragged it back to the mountain peak with strong winds. Xian threw out a talisman but it was blown away by the violent winds. He threw another one, 
but it got blown away again. Chen Xing held onto a tree, shouting, This place is going to get destroyed. Xiao Shan hooked onto the mountain wall with his dragon claw, grabbed Chen Xing, and shouted, What do we do? An ancient magical artifact had been split into two, and it actually led to such a horrible situation when they were being used to their maximum potential. Chen Xing couldn't help but admit that to a certain extent, the silence of all magic had been necessary. Xian shouted, Can we isolate the spiritual qi? This place is about to explode. The three of them were close to the peak. Broken trees and branches were flying everywhere. Chen Xing glanced at the billowing resentment gathered in the city, made up his mind, and yelled, Xiao Shan! Shield me! Then Chen Xing loosened his grip and let the wind take him up into the air. He raised his right hand, and a light flashed. The heart lamp burst brightly, and the tidal waves of resentment in the surrounding receded in response. Xiao Shan let out a loud shout. He released a spell with Kangsheng Yuli, and fierce thunderbolt strikes smashed all of the rocks hurling towards the three of them into pieces. Chen Xing urged the heart lamp, and it burst once again. Another loud blare sounded, and the resentment sea surrounding Mount Song cleared in an instant, revealing a small open space. Xian, this is our chance. At that moment, at the top of the mountain, the resentment that Feng Qianyi had been relying on for his spells was isolated outside from the barrier created by the heart lamp, and his movements stopped in an instant. Feng Qianjun turned back. He kept the Sen Luo saber and shouted, Stop this BA. Then, he released a force akin to thunder, and his figure vanished as he shot towards his elder brother. Feng Qianyi brandished his saber horizontally across his knees and immediately raised hand to cast a spell. Countless black vines rose from the ground, but Feng Qianjun cut through the dried up wood with his saber, and on the broken trees that were emitting the qi of death, green light burst from the neat cuts. He hit Feng Qianyi's wrist, and the Sen Luo saber he was holding was struck flying into the air. Feng Qianjun seized it and held both sabers at the same time. Feng Qianyi was facing the sky as he rolled over, falling out of his wheelchair and ending up struggling on the floor. Within an instant, all spells were lifted, and the peak of Mount Song regained its tranquility. Feng Qianyi let out a bitter laugh as he slowly crawled on the ground. You've won, Feng Qianyi said. Dage. Feng Qianjun couldn't stop gasping as he extended a hand towards Feng Qianyi. Feng Qianyi, but I've seen what I wanted. Let, my lord. Feng Qianyi roared loudly, his body bursting with the last vestiges of resentment, and he flew to the sky just like before. The world is unjust, so I'll die for justice. Xian's voice suddenly rang out, Feng Qianyi. Stop right there. Xian had been hovering in the sky waiting for this exact moment. He flung out a talisman and gave Feng Qianyi a taste of crushing Mount Tai. Feng Qianyi immediately let out a cry of anguish as he was struck back to the ground. Expel! Chen Xin quickly ran up to the top of the mountain and raised his hands. When Feng Qianyi fell towards Chen Xin, the light of the heart lamp burst forth and washed away all of the resentment from Feng Qianyi's body. Dage! Feng Qianjun quickly held his older brother who had fallen down. Resentment rose into the air. Blood was dripping from the corners of Feng Qianyi's mouth, before his body could move, he was attacked by the heart lamp that had the power to curb resentment, so he couldn't stop puking blood. Chen Xing immediately went forward to Feng Qianjun's side and slid to the floor, pressing his hand against Feng Qianyi's heart. Devil God's Blood Feng Qianyi was the first to drink the Devil God's Blood, and that drop of blood had already firmly occupied his heart. It had gradually integrated with the meridians in his body, transforming his frail physique. Feng Qianjun glanced at Chen Xing with a pleading look. His resistance is too strong. Chen Xing said. I, I'll try my best, hold him down. He's about to turn into a demon. Feng Qianyi's eyes widened. Xian slowly walked over, saying in a low voice, Qianyi. Xianqi. Feng Qianyi murmured. Talk to him. Chen Xing recalled that right before Che Lufeng, 
he was also gradually losing consciousness like this, so they have to keep him sober. Xian said slowly, Fang Qunyi, do you still remember what you said to me when you first left for Luoyang? Fang Qunyi. Xian continued in a low voice, although His Majesty ordered you to deal with things as you pleased, he never allowed you to kill the innocent so wantonly. Do you still remember the time of the Han Dynasty, when your Feng family's ancestor, Feng Yi, followed the venerable ruler and saved the country by expelling the enemies? Now, although you and Fujian are enemies who cannot live under the same sky, take a look at it from another perspective, what sin have the common people committed? Xian turned sideways, waving his sleeves. Beyond Mount Song, the entire Chang'an city had turned into a purgatory. Hundreds of thousands of drought fiends were wreaking havoc in the city, and the eight gates of Chang'an were filled with civilians running for their lives. Feng Qunyi's eyes widened at once. How is what you are doing different from what the Hu did? Xian frowned as he stared at Feng Qunyi, then continued murmuring, Has hatred turned you into the people that disgust you the most? Is your next step to aid Wang Zi to become the emperor, then travel south to massacre your people? His Majesty has laid a decree. If you refuse to mend your ways, he will abolish your status as a Han citizen. And you will be banished from Great Jin. You won't need to carry out any of my Great Jin's missions anymore. Feng Qunyi. Xian's voice rang out like the evening drum that rattled Feng Qunyi's heart a little, if only because out of everyone who was present, only Xian could represent their countless clansmen in the south. Restore Great Jin had always been the sturdiest resolution Feng Qunyi could rely on, so everything Xian said today struck all of Feng Qunyi's sore points. Now, he felt as if the carpet had been pulled from under his feet. Once abandoned by his country, his life's impetus would turn into nothing, filling him with an empty void. Chen Xing immediately seized this fleeting opportunity. He focused all of his concentration into mustering all of the heart lamp's energy to inject it into Feng Qunyi's heart meridian. A bright light flashed in his sea of consciousness. Along with the loud blare, the flames of the heart lamp diffused, revealing smoke signals that filled the sky and the bloody highway of Luoyang. Chen Xing glanced around in a daze, it happened again. The last time this happened was in Xiang Shu's memories. When the heart lamp was dispelling the obsessions, it brought his consciousness to the vast prairie beyond Qi Li Chuan. This time, was it Feng Qunyi's memory? I hate. I hate, a hoarse voice cried out in pain. Chen Xing was stunned by the scene before him. It was the young Feng Qunyi. He lay by the side of the highway, both his legs broken. The open wound from his cut knee was dripping with a constant stream of blood that converged into a pool below his bond, his two broken legs abandoned at one side. Fang Qunyi, with his hair in a disheveled mess, slowly dragged himself forward, leaving a trail of blood behind him. His whole body was trembling, and his gaze was filled with the will to duel to the death. Both sides of the highway were littered with the corpses of servants and children. And at the bottom of the highway, at the other end of the paddy field, a girl's blood-curdling screech could be heard, accompanied by the raucous laughter of the Qin army. Chen Xing instantly felt, from the deepest depths of Feng Qunyi's heart, the most unimaginable pain and despair. The link with the heart lamp allowed him to feel all of the grief that the people of the world were experiencing. I'll kill all of you. Feng Qunyi roared frantically. I won't let you off even if I turn into a ghost. Chen Xing gasped for a moment before rushing over, then kneeled beside Feng Qunyi and hugged him. Feng Lang. Feng Lang. That girl shouted crazily, take care of, our children. I am leaving. In the paddy field, the girl's screams ended with the last shout before death, and the world fell silent again. Feng Qunyi, I'll never, ever, let you guys off. Chen Xing whispered, Qunyi. It's not time yet, it's not time for you to leave yet, and it's not the end either. Fang Qunyi suddenly opened his eyes, and at that moment, a purplish-black monster rose from within the paddy field. Chen Xing murmured, I promise you, one day, the ending you await will come, it may be revenge, or departure. 
fresh blood gathered and turned into a roaring monster. Yet, a bright light burst forth from around Chen Xing's body that kept the devil god's blood monster from approaching them, protecting Feng Qunyi. He won't leave with you, that monster roared in a hoarse voice. Wielder of the heart lamp, you've finally come. War god, Chen Xing said in a low voice. In the present world, at the top of Mount Song, a storm was surging. Chen Xing's eyes were shut tight as he kneeled in front of Feng Qunjun, who held his brother in his arms. His body was emitting a soft glow, and the resentment from Feng Qunyi's body had mostly dissipated. Only that bit of devil blood near his heart was disintegrating and breaking apart under the intense flames of the heart lamp Chen Xing was releasing. Xian turned around, only to see that the drought fiends throughout the city seemed to have sensed something. They started gathering towards Mount Song. How much longer? Xiao Shan asked. There are a lot of monsters down below. Xiao Shan and Xian assumed an offensive stance. Within the sea of drought fiends, three drought fiend kings were dressed in black armor, preparing to attack Mount Song. Xian, let's go down to hold them back for a while. Feng Qunjun anxiously said, hold on for a little longer. Three figures suddenly appeared at the top of the mountain and lunged towards Feng Qunjun and Chen Xing from behind. Feng Qunjun let out a loud shout, but another black figure swept over from the side. The long sword in its hand spun, and with a clang, it parried the attacker's weapon. Sim away! Feng Qunjun shouted. Sim away shielded Chen Xing and Feng Qunjun as he looked up at the drought fiend kings. The drought fiend kings slowly separated each of them standing at a different position, prepared to surround and kill everyone at the peak of the mountain. In the next moment, several arrows flew over, and the three drought fiend king's helmets fell to the ground. The iron arrows had embedded themselves in the drought fiend king says, and blood was leaking out as they fell down the mountain one by one. Xiang Shu kept his bow. He looked down at Chen Xing and Fang Qunyi, then shouted in the tile language, Guard this place. Under the mountain, the Hu cavalry charged in, and with Xian and Xiao Shan's help, they formed a defensive perimeter. In Feng Qunyi's memory, that drop of purplish black blood kept attacking, wanting to seize Feng Qunyi back from Chen Xing. You may take your revenge, Chen Xing held Feng Qunyi in his arms as he whispered. Or you may not. But you must remember, revenge isn't for the ones who have passed, but for the ones who are still alive. He raised a hand at that devil blood, murmuring, Now, expel. The heart lamp exploded, turning into a tide of light that attacked the devil blood. The devil blood disintegrated in the blazing flames of the heart lamp. The monster roared as it dispersed into ashes and smoke. Present world. Chen Xing held Feng Qunyi and remained still. Suddenly, a halo burst forth from both of them and swept outwards. That bright light instantly swept away the resentment of the world and dispersed the troop of drought fiends under the mountain. Chen Xing opened his eyes, gasping for breath. His head was spinning, and Feng Qunyi, whose eyes had been wide open, fainted on the spot. Withdraw! When Xiang Shu saw Chen Xing open his eyes, he shouted, Regroup at Afang Palace! End chapter Dingai Fusion Records Chapter 99 Exemption Three Shishan later, inside Afang Palace. The troops and generals that had withdrawn from Chang'an had already quarreled so loudly that they could overturn heaven. This change of circumstances had struck the capital very suddenly. The emperor had fallen into Wang Zi's hands, and now, he was holding both Fujian and Princess King He hostage this kind of matter that would leave people feeling dumbstruck was simply unheard of. In the main hall of Afang Palace, Fu Rong, Mu Rong Chui, Yao Chong, and Fu Jian's son Fu Pai were having an intense dispute, while the soldiers and horses that had pulled out from Chang'an had already stationed themselves outside. Fu Jian's appointed crown prince, his elder cousin's eldest son, wasn't in Chang'an at this moment, and this sudden incident had made all of the generals seem like a pack of dragons without a head, they didn't know who to listen to at this moment. Where's Tuba Yan? Mirong Chui was furious. 
The commander of the Forbidden Army has unexpectedly turned a deaf ear with this incident and even His Majesty was captured. He must be beheaded in order to wash away his sin. Fu Pai said, it was His Majesty who ordered him to lead the army to calm the chaos, how could he have known that he was a sorcerer? I told you a Han is never a good thing. A group of Han officials stood inside the hall, and the scene was complete chaos. Wang Zi had always been Fu Jian's trusted aide, so who could have imagined that this was a rebellion incited by him? After Wang Meng's death, the Qin court had always looked up to Wang Zi as its head. It was fortunate that nothing had happened to Fu Jian, but still, the entire court was thrown into chaos at this moment. When they were still quarreling, footsteps were heard from outside the hall. The great Chanyu has arrived, said a eunuch in a loud voice. The hall was filled with silence. Xiang Shu's whole body was covered in blood, and when he came in, he threw down his helmet to the ground with a dang. Still in full armor, he walked past the people in front of the hall, climbing up the stairs step by step and sitting down on the imperial throne of Afang Palace. Everyone! Xiang Shu, talk B.A. Report the situation. In an instant, the people of the Qin court realized a critical problem. Fu Jian had been captured, but coincidentally, Shola Kong was in Chang'an. Nominally speaking, this guy was the great Chanyu of the Hus, and the Han people were not obliged to listen to him. But, according to reason, as long as one's ancestors had participated in the blood oath of the Qi Le ancient covenant, they all must obey him. At this time, Xiang Shu could totally replace Fu Jian to exercise the responsibility of the emperor for the time being. What? Xiang Shu said in a deep voice. Do you have any objection? Everyone shot a I look at you, you look at me glance at each other. Fu Rong was clear about Xiang Shu and Fu Jian's relationship, when it came to coveting Fu Jian's throne and title, Xiang Shu was unlikely to go as far as even thinking about it. Thus, he stepped forward and said, reporting to the great Chan Yu, the entire army has been completely pulled back, while the common people inside the city have also been helped to settle down in the west bank of the Zha River. Where's the crown prince? Questioned Xiang Shu. We've already dispatched someone to go as fast as possible to Dong Hai to inform him, said Yao Chong as he stepped up and bowed down. Xiang Shu asked again, where's Murong Chong? Murong Chui just mused silently on it. Xiang Shu frowned and asked, Murong Chui, you don't know how to speak. At this, Murong Chui had no alternative but to step forward and reply, Murong Chong is on his way. I think he should arrive by tomorrow evening. Though Xiang Shu could perceive that something was amiss from this momentary hesitation, he pressed no further. This unforeseen event had only occurred last night and Murong Chong rushing over from Pingyang would take about three days at the earliest, so most likely, someone must have notified him in advance during this one-day delay. At that time, the drought field chaos had yet to happen. As such, the Murong family must have been informed in advance it wasn't hard to guess what they wanted to do. Murong Chui, lead the troops and guard the four gates of Chang'an, Xiang Shu said. Make sure not to let those living corpses escape. Yes, Mirong Chui replied. Xiang Shu continued, Yao Chang and Fu Rong, reorganize the army. Wait for Gyu Wang's order and until after Wang Zi has been executed, then force your way through from the south, west, and north gate. Storm the imperial city from three directions to leave them with one exit. When the drought fiends have been driven away to the Zha River's plains, prepare for a decisive battle. Yes, the remaining people replied. Xiang Shu, the rest of you, prepare the coal oil and throwing mechanism inside Afang Palace to form a defense perimeter. Wait for Murong Chang's reinforcements are you done? Chen Xin came in, his hand holding a piece of cloth covered in blood as he gasped for breath, tired. Go take a break, Xiang Shu said. Chen Xin waved his hands and replied, once I've finished talking, I'll go. Everyone Darren. Chen Xin turned toward the crowd before looking at Xiang Shu again, slightly hesitating. Do you really want to tell them? He confirmed. 
Xiang Shu frowned impatiently. Since I let you talk, just say it. Chen Xin could only recount the whole course of events. The hall was in absolute silence. After he had finished talking, Chen Xin suddenly remembered a fairly important matter. Princess King He, she. After hearing the inside story, Yao Chong simply became alarmed and looked at Murong Chui, whose face had already darkened as he said, This is slander. Where's the proof? Gu Wang is the witness, Xiang Shu said indifferently, If you don't believe it, wait until after King He is rescued, and you can confront her face to face then. Only, Jiantu must have also been well aware of this matter already. This. At once, Fu Rong realized that this major affair wouldn't be good at all. Wasn't this just forcing Murong Chui out? This was no small matter, if he clarified Wang Zi's arrangement, it was tantamount to telling everyone that Princess King He had also participated in the conspiracy to restore the country, and the Murong family wouldn't be able to escape the blame. Although most people inside the court already believed that the Murong family had the intention to plot a rebellion, once this fact came out, what other options would Murong Chui have? After listening, Xiang Shu waved his hand at Chen Xing, signaling for him to come over. Chen Xing walked to the bottom of the steps. Xiang Shu said, Come closer. Chen Xing. Chen Xing thus climbed up one step. Come to Gyu Wang's side. Xiang Shu impatiently said, I won't eat you, what are you afraid of? Everyone. All officials inside the hall were looking at Murong Chui's face. For a moment, they didn't know what he would decide. Would he draw out his sword on the spot and throw it to the ground before shouting Lao Zi is rebelling? Then rush out to start the mutiny? Or would he kneel down and plead his guilt to this great Chanya who was currently exercising his right as the emperor of the dynasty? Yet Xiang Shu was not in the least aware of the situation and was instead exchanging flirting glances with this Han person inside the hall. What on earth was this all about? Oh. Oh. Chen Xin came over to Xiang Shu's side. Impatiently, Xiang Shu grabbed Chen Xin's hand and showed the officials the ring on his finger. Do you recognize this signet ring? Xiang Shu said, still irritated. Everyone lowered their heads one by one. With Gyu Wang's authority as the great Chan Yu to exempt people from punishment, Xiang Shu said, Gyu Wang grants a special pardon to Princess King He of the Murong clan. All of the court officials present simultaneously let out a sigh of relief, and in that brief moment, there wasn't enough time to wonder why a Han man was wearing the great Chan Yu's ring. Thank God, this way, they had all just been spared from internal strife. Furthermore, Gyu Wang grants a special pardon to the Feng family's Feng Qunyi, Xiang Shu added. These two people's crime of conspiring to rebel will be written off once and for all. After this, both must not be investigated and interrogated anymore, and no one is allowed to start a rumor or provoke a dispute with them, if this is not followed, that will be a violation against the Qi Le covenant, and all of the Hus will jointly condemn them. Chen Xin thought in his heart, the person who the rebellion was plotted against isn't you. When Fu Jian comes out later, I think he's going to die from excess anger because of you. Anyway, forget it, he deserves his bad luck. This way, apart from the mastermind Wang Zi, the Feng family and Princess King He were all safe. Everyone knew that there was also no middle ground out of this, once this case was investigated, it would only force the Murong clan out. Chen Xin couldn't help but take a peek at Xiang Shu whose body was covered in black blood and dirty armor with a hint of admiration in his eyes as he thought to himself, seems like it's also not wrong for this guy to be the Emperor Ma. Xiang Shu then said, that's it, disperse. Anywhere else you want to go. I'm going to see Tua Yan, Chen Xin replied. He's injured. I'll go with you. Xiang Shu rose from the emperor's throne and walked in front of the crowd, leaving the hall with him. In the evening that day, Tua Yan was lying inside the room while Xian, Xiao Shan, and Feng Qianzhen were watching closely on the side. Xiao Shan was still holding Chen Xing's dog in his hands. Lying down on the other couch was the still unconscious Feng Qianyi. 
Tuba Yan's stomach, which had been cut open by the drought fiend king, had a bloody hole from below the ribs to the navel area. Xiao Shan helped to press on his wound while Chen Xing stitched him up. When it was done, Chen Xing's hands were covered in blood, and he had a dizzy spell. Xiang Shu watched from the sidelines. Fortunately, the injury wasn't that serious, but there was a faint black chi coming out of the wound. However, Chen Xing's hand was emitting the light from the heart lamp as he stopped his bleeding and stitched up the wound wherever he went. Under the heart lamp, the resentment dissipated on its own, and the pitch black cut also gradually returned to its normal dark red. All right. Chen Xing then asked Tuba Yan to take a pill to improve blood circulation and regrow flesh, saying, You go take a good rest. You must not move around unnecessarily. Tuba Yan, whose face was drained of any color and still extremely weak, fell into a deep sleep on the couch. Chen Xing wiped his sweat. He didn't know the number of patients he had looked over today. Since arriving in Afang Palace, he had been rushing around without stopping all over the camp to check up on all officers, soldiers, as well as common people who had gotten injured because they were bitten by the drought fiends. Fortunately, after the drought fiends were let out this time, they had immediately gathered in front of the Imperial Palace and didn't attack mortals all over the place. As soon as the people of Chang'an saw those monsters, they ran away at once. Moreover, the army was also pulled back immediately. There was only Tuba Yan leading the Forbidden Army. Not fearing for his life, he had attacked the Imperial Palace in order to get Fuji Un back, resulting in him getting seriously injured. Other people, such as the private troops of the Murong clan, almost all of them had withdrawn as soon as they could and fled faster than anyone else even Fu Rong had rushed to save his own life. Still so stubborn. Chen Xing felt helpless. Sometimes, Tuba Yan is just like a fool. How many people have you treated? Xian asked. Little Shidi, you also go take a rest B.A. Chen Xing was indeed very tired. The revival of all magic had indeed supplied a plentiful amount of spiritual qi for the heart lamp, however, compared to before, it also consumed more of his mental constitution. Wiping his sweat and sitting on the edge of the couch, he said, Yes. I should rest for a moment. Very tired, truly very tired. Saying so, he patted the puppy and leaned against Xiang Shu, and actually fell asleep while sitting just like that. Xiang Shu. Everyone. And so, everyone just sat in the room while looking at each other. That. After he had finished attending to his elder brother, Feng Qianzhen said, Let me introduce you B.A. This person is. Little Xiangdi Xiao Shan, our old friend who is also here to exorcise devils. Xiao Shan. Feng Qianzhen continuously winked at Xiao Shan. Puzzled, Xiao Shan threw a questioning look at Xian before looking back at Feng Qianzhen who was fiercely squeezing his eye now. Xiao Shan didn't really get it but still nodded. Xian, however, had already seen that Xiang Shu didn't remember the past events. He nodded and said, I'm called Xianqi. Xiang Shu's expression clearly indicated that he seemed to have seen these two people from somewhere before. It was just, he couldn't seem to remember where he had seen them at all before, and thus, he could only say, Since you're all Chen Xing's old friends, you may retreat B.A. Go and settle down anywhere you please, just say it's my order. Let Chen Xing have a rest first. But on second thoughts, he felt it wasn't right either, since there were also Tuba Yan and Feng Qunyi in the room. And so, he princess carried Chen Xing and personally looked for a place to settle him down. After Xiang Shu left, Feng Qunzhen, Xian, and Xiao Shan started to exchange information. Feng Qunzhen said, Up until this moment, I'm still afraid that this is just a dream, but it shouldn't be. I heard that before people died, unsettled matters during their life would all be replayed like a moving shadow lantern. You see, whether it's you or Xiao Shan, Fu Jian, Mai Daich, or Tuba Yan, I have seen you all before. This scene. Feng Qianzhen was full of doubts as he motioned for Xian to look around the Imperial Palace. 
Do you think it looks like a moving shadow lantern? Xian said, Qianzhen, you're just tired and lightheaded, take a rest and you'll be fine. I was also skeptical about it, but haven't you discovered yet? There is one thing that proves we're not currently dreaming, but indeed have gone back to three years ago. Xiao Shan. Xian gave out a cunning smile. That phoenix, have you seen its human form? As a Yao king, it must have a human form, right? Even if there was no human form, you've seen the phoenix, right? Do you know what a phoenix looks like? The phoenix we saw, is it the same as what you imagined? Xian caused Fang Qianzhen to have a sudden realization. Indeed, if this was just a figment of his imagination that he had before death, it could only be a repetition of the past events in his life. All of the flashbacks should have people in his memory, and their appearances might be blurred with age. Except, they had indeed never seen what the phoenix looked like before. I've seen his human form. Feng Qianzhen could finally be certain that this wasn't an illusion. Nodding, Xian then said, this time, Wang Zi obtained the Akala blade before us, which actually complicated things. We have to find a way to retrieve it back and return it to martial god's hands so we can break the final piece in the Battle of the Fei River. Feng Qianzhen had heard Chen Xing talking about the altar on the battlefield. He thoughtfully said, only Xiang Xiangdi knows the entrance to the Huanmo Palace. How could he, out of all people, forget all about this? Xian said, it won't be a hindrance. I made arrangements before I came here ordering people to go to the Fei River to dig into the ground within several li radius of the battlefield. As long as we have the patience to dig for two or three years, we'll totally be able to dig it out. Not expecting that there was also this kind of stupid method, Feng Qianzhen just nodded his head. Xiao Shan added, wait until we go back to save El Yu Ying. El Yu Ying said he might have some ways that could help Chen Xing. The scenery inside the garden was like that of a painting. In the summer, greenish-blue color filled the courtyard, and wind chimes on the corridor gently chimed as they were tossed about by the wind. This garden and Chang'an, which had resentment soaring all around, seemed to be separated by the wall, successfully turning it into utopia on earth. Chen Xing slept until the sky turned murky, and the earth went dim. He rose up from one side of the couch and let out a yawn. I thought you wouldn't wake up. Xiang Shu was currently sitting in the outer room. Dressed only in his undergarments, he was playing the chin while facing the courtyard, which glittered in the sunshine and made for a painting-like, beautiful scenery. Chen Xing suddenly became alarmed. How long have I been sleeping? Where's this? Chen Xing himself was even a little afraid. He thought about the previous time that had lasted for three months. Could it be that things have once again moved in an uncontrollable direction? Chang'an has already fallen, and they've arrived in Jiangnan. One night, replied Xiang Shu. We're still in Afang Palace. Fang Qunyi and the dog have been sent off ahead, as to avoid Jianta trying to settle the debts once he returns. As soon as he woke up, Chen Xing was almost scared into collapsing again. Fortunately, fortunately, I was just too tired. You saved more than a thousand people. Xiang Shu said in disbelief. On that day, as they withdrew to Afang Palace, Chen Xing had seen that those common people and the Forbidden Army's troops who were either scratched or bitten, so he stayed behind in order to dispel their resentment. Unknowingly, he had actually treated some thousand people then. What pleased him the most was the fact that the Heart Lamp, after the revival of all magic, had been able to cleanse the wound of those injured with the support of the power of the spiritual chi of heaven and earth. That is to say, there was no need to fear that someone's corpse would transform any more. Chen Xing's expression was at a loss as he was also unsure. Now what? What do we do now? Great Chan Yu, several imperial guards came over and said, Your armor. Thus, Xiang Shu set aside the qin and got up, saying, your Shikshang volunteered to go ahead in order to hinder Wang Zi. Feng Qianzhen also wished to rescue Princess King He. Chen Xing said, This matter is definitely much more serious than they think. 
we have to discuss it thoroughly first. Now, Wang Zi had occupied the imperial palace and held both Fu Jian and Princess King He as hostages. While Xiang Shu had 100,000 troops in his hands surrounding Chang'an, he was actually at his wit's end. He had to rescue the hostages first and let Fu Jian himself deal with the rest however he liked. Xiang Shu looked at Chen Xing and became at a loss for words all of a sudden. What? Chen Xing asked. The space between Xiang Shu's eyebrows harbored some doubts, as if he were pondering about something. However, he just shook his head after that while saying, nothing. Chen Xing. Chen Xing had his suspicions that Xiang Shu might have remembered something. In fact, from the moment he saw him again, Xiang Shu occasionally showed this kind of expression that looked as if he was immersed in memories. After he finished changing his clothes, Chen Xing hurried to Afang Palace's platform. Together with the others, he gazed toward Chang'an and saw that Viang Palace, which stood several li away, was enveloped by a black dome covered by dense black clouds. It'll be very difficult. Chen Xing frowned. That barrier is a defensive wall set up using the Akala blade. This defensive wall was also called boundary by the previous dynasty, and in order to utilize it, it relied on the power of the magical artifact itself. Wang Zi used this defensive wall in order to, first, confine the abundant resentment inside, and second, block the mortals outside, making it impossible for them to enter. The phoenix flew in and perched on the rooftop. Do you need help? Xiang Shu, who's talking? Not for now. Chen Xing also had an idea for his last wish, it was just, he couldn't use it up so easily like that. Thus, he explained to Xiang Shu, this is a, heir, the Yao King. Could you please transform into your human form so I can take a look? Xian politely asked. You have Chen Xing ask for that, the phoenix said. I'll agree to whatever he says. Xiang Shu. Xiang Shu examined the phoenix, a dangerous expression on his face. Chen Xing hurriedly explained, it's not like what you think. Forget it, I'll explain it to you once we're free. Tuo Yan kept one hand on his wound and came over with much difficulty. Feng Qianzhen quickly lent a hand to support him. I've tried, Tuo Yan said. It's extremely dangerous inside that black-colored wall, and there are also monsters guarding it. Wu. Chen Xing frowned as he pondered about the matter, his mind moving at lightning speed thinking about how to dissolve that defensive wall. Today, no matter what happened, they had to expel Wang Zi, they had tolerated him for far too long. After a moment's contemplation, Xian said, according to theory, as long as we violently attack this defensive wall until the resentment inside is all spent, it will naturally disintegrate. It's not that easy, Chen Xing said, Zhang Lu had once used the Akala blade to set up the boundary inside the Yin Yang mirror. For hundreds of years, even Shi Hai couldn't break it. What is the Akala blade? Xiang Shu once again found that that name was seemingly familiar. It was supposed to be a sword that belongs to you. Chen Xing said. But now it has fallen into Wang Zi's hands. Xian said, how did you both get in the last time? During their confrontation with Feng Qianyi the first time around, there had been no defensive wall in the Viang Palace. At that time, Chen Xing had gotten outside and inside of the palace with the help of the Yin Yang mirror. But this time, the connecting mirror had been destroyed as well. It was truly a headache. Is there any way, Chen Xin pondered, to cheat our way past this defensive wall and go inside to take Fu Jian and Princess King He back any? How did Wang Zi cheat the Akala blade and pick it up? There must be a way. There is. Where's Sim away? Quick. Get Sim away here. That evening, a group of people, just like before, had gathered in Mount Song before they continuously moved to approach Viang Palace. Xian sighed. Little Shi Di is indeed very clever. SSSH. Chen Xing was super nervous as he looked at the location they were continuously moving toward, that black silhouette of Viang Palace at the end of the main street of Chang'an. I'm still not sure if this will work, 
Chen Xing whispered. Xiang Shu said, once it crumbles later, Chen Xing and I will be in charge of Kajera, while you all handle the drought fiend army. Chen Xing nodded before lifting his head to look at Xiang Shu who patted the back of his hand in return. The two then held each other's hand. As Chen Xing's hand glowed in radiance, he channeled the light along his right hand's meridian and poured it into Xiang Shu's whole body until his heart meridian radiated a brilliant light. Get a hold of Wang Zi's spear first, Chen Xing repeatedly warned. The most important thing is to reclaim your divine weapon. Xiang Shu nodded his head. Sima Wei was carrying Fang Qianzhen's Sen Luo Wang Ziyang on his back as he walked through the road, which was bustling with drought friends on both sides, toward the defensive wall. After passing through without any resistance, he went straight to the depths of Viang Palace. A devil spear, its whole body pitch black with resentment surging around it, was set up in the center of the balcony of Viang Palace. The glow on the spear's red blood runes twinkled as it spread around circles after circles, similar to sea waves, to finally form that indestructible defensive array. Wang Zi stood in front of the platform with Fujian, who was currently surveying the scene of countless numbers of living dead inside the imperial palace from his location up above. Wang Zi, the dead will never, ever, meet their demise in the human world. Look B.A., your majesty, these officers and soldiers, before death, were for you to command, and after death, they will also fight for you. The five drought fiend kings gathered around the side of the platform. Wang Zi approached them, taking off the helmet of one of them before motioning to Fujian to have a look. What does your majesty think? During their life and after their death, are there any major differences? Fujian coldly said, what sweet yet insincere words, Wang Zi. You're merely trying to tempt Zhen to drink your poison so Zhen would become a living dead able to be controlled by you, that's all. Wang Zi smiled. Your Majesty, you might as well look at me first, then look at them. I've already possessed several thousand years worth of life as I wandered around freely between heaven and earth. Do you think I am controlled by anyone? Fujian was stunned at once. Wang Zi continued. If a living person is forced to drink the devil's blood, that is not wrong, it will turn them into a muddle-headed walking corpse that no longer has their own consciousness. Only if you are most willing to dedicate your life to my lord, will he help you get an eternal life that is lacking death, and is free and unfettered as I am right now. Moreover, since your life is in my hands right now, Wang Zi gave out a cold smile and he added, why would I even bother saying this kind of nonsense to you? Princess King He was on the side as she looked at Wang Zi in bewilderment. Wang Zi, as long as you nod your head, my lord will give you an army so great it will never run out, while also bestowing upon you a body that will not die. End chapter